Keith, people ask whether God exists, is the will free, the immortality of the soul, but all those questions pale into insignificance compared to the ultimate question, why is there something rather than nothing? If you understand the question, it drives you batty. Can we make any progress on that? Well, we can say things about it, uh, and I think some of those things make sense, and uh, I would make sense of it too. I mean, because one answer to it is there's no reason. I mean, that is an answer to the question, why is there something? You say, well, there isn't any reason. Then you'd have to give a long explanation of why there isn't a reason. Right? Suppose you have the view, though, that there is a reason for almost any sensible question that you ask, and there is a reason why the universe exists. And then you'd ask, well, what could that reason be if there were one? And I would start by asking, well, um, if something was really worthwhile and good and valuable and you enjoyed experiencing it and you didn't want to do anything else, that was exactly what you wanted to do. So it was just something valuable in itself. That would be a good reason for having that thing, whatever it is. Suppose it's sitting in the sun on a beautiful day. You say, I just, that's just a worthwhile experience. I would choose that. So I think you start by thinking, well, that has something being of value, having an objective value in itself, intrinsic value, it's valuable for its own sake. That's a good reason why something should exist. It would seem that that's a reason for a human to do things, but it, it seems very weak to say that's why a universe exists or that's why anything exists at all. No, I don't think that's weak. I, th I think you would say, well, um, if it's a reason for something to exist, that it is good that it exists, that it's a value that it exists, uh, then if the universe produces millions of uh, things which are worthwhile in themselves, uh, that's a very good reason for a universe to exist. But does that have causative power? Well, that's the problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, it seems to, well, it does entail, I think, uh, that if there is a reason for something to exist, namely that it's good, there must be a mind which conceives of that reason. Okay. So I think anybody who believes that, that a universe exists because it's good, must be thinking there's a mind which chooses it because it's good. And then the question goes further back. You get another question, really. Not just, is it good? Uh, but why would a mind exist which was able to choose something because it's good? But that's a good start. I mean, to say, well... Uh, I, I think those are, those are pieces. Um, in terms of a start, because when we say, why is there something rather than nothing, that's something includes everything. If you're, yeah. if, if, you're try, if you're a physicist looking at a theory of everything, laws of physics, that that's the laws of physics. Where did they come from? If you don't want to have a God or you don't want to have anything supernatural, where did they come from? You can have multiple universes, but they're based upon the laws of physics. But on, this, on, on the same token, if you have God, you can ask the same kind of question. Where did the laws of physics come from? Where did God come from? I mean, you can define them as being self-existent, but that's just a just a trick. Well, I don't think it's a trick. <laughs> it might be an insight, uh, and it was Aristotle's insight. I mean, it was what Aristotle thought. He 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 said Aristotle said, um, if there's an ultimate reason why something exists, he didn't appeal to goodness. So he brought it in at the second step. Mm -hmm. But his first step was that it has to be that it could not fail to exist. It has to exist. Okay. So now you're into philosophical deep water and you say, well, uh, can you make sense of saying something has to exist? Yeah. Necessity. It, necessity, yeah. yeah. Is, is everything just contingent? Well, m my take on that would be, I can't see any reason <laughs> why um, things have to be contingent. I don't see it's a necessary truth that all existence is contingent. So I get the move, well, there could then, it's possible, it's there possible. could be something necessarily existing. Right. So there's a possibility. It's a powerful step. Yeah. And if you say, well, that's possible, I'm not going to the ontological argument here that if it's <laughs> possible, it's necessary. Yeah. Well, I half believe that. But, <laughs> but without going quite that far. What Aristotle thought was, if you can think of something which could not fail to exist, then obviously it exists, so you've got a reason uh, why it exists, because it's necessary, it has to be that way. Now, Immanuel Kant, who's a philosopher I'm very fond of, uh, proposed that maybe uh, when you think of possible worlds, as physicists often do, you have lots of possible worlds, uh, that these possible worlds, do, do possible worlds exist or, or not? Well, physicists often think they exist, uh, so let's suppose that possible worlds exist. And you say, well, conceive of, just a thought experiment, just conceive of every possible world, every state of affairs that could possibly be, and they're all there as possibilities, right? Now, that exhaustive set of possibles would actually have to exist in a being which is necessarily existent, because 
all possibles, if anything is ever possible, is always possible. And there's no alternative to right. the exhaustive set of possibilities. Right. So you have an exhaustive set. Possibilities are ne necessary. Yeah. So you've, you've got a necessary being. The, the necessary being is oh, the... Oh, you made a step there a little too fast. Uh, I, was well, I thought you, I'd go away with that. <laughs> <laughs> but a necessary being would be a being which was the ground or the foundation or the basis of all possible worlds. Okay. So the exhaustive set of all possible worlds is itself necessarily existent. It couldn't be otherwise. It couldn't be any other. All possibilities are there. There's nothing else is possible. There couldn't be any other way. It couldn't cease to exist because if it did, those possibilities wouldn't exist. And they have to exist. And they have to exist. So, now, is that convincing? I would just put it forward as a possibility, as a thought experiment, and say, look, obviously human beings are not going to think of the ultimate reason for existence, but we can ask the question, could there be such a thing? And I think this argument gets you far enough to say, well, as far as I can see, there could be such a thing. And if there were, it would explain why everything exists, namely, bloody well has to, <laughs> all right? And then, so you've got two prongs, you say. On the one hand, something has to exist. That would be the mind of God, the mind in which all possibilities are. And on the other hand, the actual world, the one which is not just possible but actual, is chosen by God because it's good. Well, that seems a pretty good explanation to me. Value and necessity. Value and necessity. Yeah. Put those together. And Aristotle did think that. that that's there quite clearly in his metaphysics. Um, and I think Kant really believed that. I mean, a lot of people think Kant undermined the argument from necessity, but he didn't really. Um, he just said it wasn't a theoretically uh, provable argument. Okay. But he did actually think God was a necessary being. I mean, it's very important to remember, Immanuel Kant did believe in God. He said you had to believe in God and that God was a necessary being. So you know, people often misunderstand Kant and think he demolished that concept. He didn't. He didn't at all. He just said there's no theoretical, experimental, really, uh, proof of such a being. And that's true, I'm not going for that. Uh, so I'm really agreeing with Kant and with Aristotle. And um, as an argument from authority, that's quite good. <laughs>